Hallelujah. All right. This morning, we'll be looking at a very important subject as it relates to our lives and how we fulfill destiny as individuals. So I'll be speaking on a subject titled, Managing Your Personality, Inclination, and Passion to Align with Your Purpose. Managing your personality, your inclinations, and your passion to align with your purpose. Now, it's important to note that um, when God made you and I, he gave us potentials. And when you talk about potentials, you are talking about inherent ability. All right. Innate abilities that God put within us. And there are several of them. Starting with your natural talents. That's your natural gift. Um, your talent talks about the ability that God gave you naturally to do certain things that comes easy for you. Okay? And we have different talents. I think one of those days I talked about it in this house. We have different talents. Some people have talent, natural ability to sing. Some people have natural ability to talk. Talking is just easy for them. Some have natural ability to, to crack jokes. Some have natural ability to rear animals. Um, I was talking to somebody which other day who, is, uh, who reared about 5,000 birds, chickens, and less than 100 actually died. You know, um, that's a natural ability, natural gift. Some have natural ability to, um, for farm, for farming, and when they are farming, you can, you can be sure that they will do well and all of that. So we all have different natural abilities, okay? But aside from our natural abilities, God also gave us our personality. He gave us our inclination, the tendencies, the things that we have tendencies for, which I'm going to be getting into um, very soon. And then he gave us passion, which talks about our energy. And it becomes necessary as an individual to know how to harness, galvanize all that God has put inside of you so that you can fulfill the purpose of God for your life. God has a purpose for your life. Come on, say, God has a purpose for my life. Say it one more time. God has a purpose for my life. And it is the desire of God that your life, you should use your life to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. Okay. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Can you bring down a little bit? Uh, keep it on, but a little. Just a little down a little. Yeah. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. If you can keep your hand, yes, just keep your hands on it. Yeah. Don't, don't not low. I'm saying just keep your hands on it. Yeah. Okay, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Are we there? Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. All right. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nursery the breath of life. A man became, man became, man became, okay, good. A translation says man became a living soul. A translation says man became a living being. Okay, whichever of the side, you know, um, the, the um, idea is very clear. That man began to find expression. So when the Bible says man became a living being, it means man began to express. He began to express himself. He began to give expressions. You know, in Genesis chapter 1, God had already said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the sea, blah, 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 blah. So in other words, there was a purpose in the mind of man. There was an intention. 
I mean, in the heart of God, sorry, there was an intention what God wanted man to do with his life. And every one of us, there is an intention, there is what God wants you, or maybe I should say, there are what God wants you to do for him with your life. What God wants you to do as you relate with people, what God wants you to do as you carry out daily activities. God wants you to do certain things. Uh, you, um, you know, we always say in this house that God, there, are, there is what to become and there are what to carry out, what to do. God wants you to do certain things and God wants you to be certain things. Now, what you become and what you do, they have a way of touching people. They impact the lives of people. They impact on your environment. They impact on the society, what you become and what you do. All right? Now, in, in, in you giving expressions to yourself, when we say you are living, when you are expressing based on what God has put on the inside of you, if you begin to give expressions by what God has put on the inside of you to yourself, we say you are living. But we need to look at what we use to give expression. What are the things that we use to give expressions? And so we are looking, focusing on three of them, and then we are looking at how do I ensure that I, I, I manage those things in such a way that I can give expressions to the way God wants me to, the way God wants me to give expressions. I can express, I can fulfill the purpose of God for my life. So let's start with that, um, with your personality. Your personality. Now when we talk about your personality, I, I, this is where I'm going to spend a little time. When we talk about your personality, um, we are talking about the qualities that you express. The summation of qualities that you express in your feelings, in your thinking, and in your behavior. Are you following me at all? Now, when we come across you, there are qualities that you express. There's a way you give expression to yourself that is unique. When we look at you, there's a way you talk. There's a way you relate with people. And they are relatively permanent. We look at them, we see it, we see that consistently this is the way you really, you really come out. This is the way you, you find expression. Okay? Your personality is your character in display. Are you following me, Antonio? When your character is displaying, then we say, yes, this is the personality of this person. Now, over the years, um, researchers have tried to help us to understand personality. Um, the popular one is the four that is phlegmatic, choleric, sanguine, melancholy. And I'm going to focus on that, okay? But there are other ones, other classification. There's one of the classification that is called ocean, which is similar to the um, other four. Now, the ocean talks about openness, the level to which somebody is open to new ideas, is open to people, you know, and all that. Then it talks about conscientiousness, which is the degree to which somebody is well organized, uh, well focused, um, um, giving attention to details, and all of that. Then we talk about um, extroversion, the degree to which somebody relates with other people, interact with other people, which is somehow similar to what we have in sanguine. And then we also have um, what we call agreeableness, the level to which somebody is um, just peaceful, just find it easy to relate with other people. And then we have the last one, which is neuroticism, which is the degree of madness. <laughs> um, the, the level to which somebody just becomes aggressive, reactive, and all of that. But I'm not going to use ocean because it's not really easy to understand by people who are not necessarily um, researchers or psychologists and all of that. So let's, let's pitch our tent with the common one that people use. Melancholy, phlegmatic, and sanguine. Now take note. What we describe in all this personality, either you are talking about a sanguine or a phlegmatic person or a melancholic person, you are actually talking about the way they express themselves. Hello? 
The way they do what? The way they express themselves. Now, there are character qualities. There are qualities in terms of the way they think, in terms of the way they behave, that we, we, we see, we perceive. And that is what makes us to blank them and say, this person has cholerism, or this person is choleric, or this person is sanguine, and all of that. Let me also quickly make it clear here that there is no, nothing like somebody is purely choleric or somebody is purely sanguine, okay? So let's take them one by one. Let's look at what are the qualities we see with a phlegmatic person, for example. Um, researchers tell us that the phlegmatic person is introverted, that likes to just be in his world, just like to be himself. The phlegmatic person is calm, not necessarily um, um, reactive. He's just calm. He can sit down. If you put a phlegmatic person there, he can sit down there by himself, just be himself and all of that. And then he said, the phlegmatic person is not necessarily very emotional. I mean, when they are happy, they are happy, but they are not, it's not that you are, oh! They are just there. They are not necessarily going to now begin to um, show undue excitement or show undue low. Then it says they can be patient and agreeable. So let's, let, let's make a, a little uh, this. Sister Hyoma, Hyoma here, for example, has a lead, has a measure of display of a flag. She can be with you in the listen and just be there and just observe you people, just observe what you are doing. She's just there. Uh, but there are people that I know that their own is a little far more than that. Are you following me at all now? They are just not part of, nothing bothers them. They are not in a hurry. They are not in a haste for anything. Um, those ones who are very high on it, they, sometimes they don't even, when you look at them, you look as if they don't even have anything that they are pursuing or they don't have any ambition, they don't have any, they're just there. They are not bad people, they are not going to hurt anybody, but they're just there. They can flow with everybody. If you say it's yellow, it is yellow. If you say it's blue, it is blue. If you say it's black, it is black. Even when they have a contrary opinion, they may not necessarily be, but they also have other side in the sense that they are peace lover. They can create a blend. Because that personality, um, each of those personalities that we're talking about, they have their good side, they have their bad side. They have their excesses, they have their um, positive. Yes. Now, the idea I'm trying to say, I mean, I pass across in this message, is that oftentimes, most people say, just accept me the way I am. I am a flag. This is just me. Are you following me at all now? And you'll see where I'm talking about the need for you to manage it so that you can fulfill the purpose of God for your life. Then you have people who are choleric. The choleric, they will say, they are assertive, you know, when they have a point, they want to make their point. In fact, the way you will see, they will even do it. What I'm saying is, you know, and all of that. They are assertive, they are energetic, they are, you know, sometimes they can also be very quick-tempered. They can be it can be easier for them to get angry. They are very decisive. Um, one of the things that is bad about them that people talk about is that they can be so focused on the result that they want to get that they don't care how you feel. So they can step on people in the process of getting the result. Now, it has a good side and a bad side. The good side of it is that they are usually the ones that are, um, they are prone to lead because their personality comes with a tendency to be a leader. But the bad side of them is also the fact that in the process of leading, sometimes they can be so careless that they may not care what people think. They just want to lead. And then they express themselves. You know, I think we have another, we have, I mean, we have a, a good example in choir, Sister Princess as a measure of expression of choleric. So you see them express themselves, you see them, they are very energetic. You know, and all of that. And one of the challenges with being a choleric is that if you don't manage it very well, it is easier for people to hate you because of expression. That's why we are, we are talking about how to manage it, how to manage your personality. Because choleric, for example, when you want to get anything done, give it to them. They will get the result. 
And that's why most often than not, you will find out that many leaders have some measure of choleric because they are results oriented. They are, are goal getter. They push for it. Am I making sense of that? But they also have the tendency to be careless if care is not taken. They are more concerned about what they want to get and all of that, and then they can get into trouble. All right. I think my pastor can be like that too. <laughs> Very choleric, they have their point, they have what they want to get, they want to get their result, is the result or nothing else. Okay. Are we together? Then you have people who are sanguine. You know, um, these people, they are very jovial, they are very open, they are spontaneous, they just, you know, they can be creative, they are cheerful. You know, people always say, that put a sanguine anywhere, the place will become lively. Because they make everybody laugh, they make everybody play. You know, they, make, they just want to, you know, they are good, jolly fellow. They relate with anybody. They are people, person, as it were. The only other side about them is that they can be unserious. They can be unserious. They can play with things that are very important. They can even play at the time that you should not be playing. They can come to a very... Uh, I mean, ceremony, and then you see everybody's mouth and say, ah, why is everybody sad here? Rejoice! <laughs> Are we together? Because, because for them, everything has to be fun. It just has to be, you know, jolly, you know? You see, but if you have a little element of that, you know, she, he just wants to come to the altar and say, come on, dance. Everybody, clap your hands. Hey! <laughs> Praise God. If you take them to a revival meeting, instead of Willie and Sommy, they just say, <laughs> You know, revival meeting has to be so bad. Reflection. They will make you dance in a revival meeting. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, then you have, you have people who express themselves as melancholic. They say that these people are more sensitive. They are, uh, they are more paranoid. In other words, they have the tendency to suspect people. They have the tendency to... Are you sure that person, this message pastor is preaching this morning, are you sure he's not talking about me, you know? They, that, they, they are thinking, of course, anybody can have a feeling that, even some can have a feeling that pastor is talking about me. But they, they are more suspicious, every move, you know, and all of that. But again, the good part of it is that they are also very analytical. They can see problem where others cannot see it. They can see where the things go wrong. They are very critical, you know? They, they have a critical mind. They, they have very analytical mind in the way they, are, they express themselves. They, they are not people who just jump into things. They think through, they assess it, the way they pose and the cons and all of that. Okay, I haven't expressed these personalities in the four types as it were. I'm sure you can always study to get a little more. Now, research has shown that people can have a little element of cholerism, a little element of sanguine. So they merge together. So when you see them, a part of them is choleric, a part of them is sanguine. Um, Sister Princess is like that. She's a little sanguine, a little choleric. She can be very playful, and then she can be very firm in getting the result. Are you following me at all? Different. Um, Pastor Shei, for example, a little melancholy, a little choleric. You know? She can be, it can be, and then it can be, it can be very analytical, considering everything and all of that. At the same time, it can be, this, this is the way the thing must go. All of that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. What is wrong with personality? Nothing other than the fact that the fall of man created a problem for us. Are you following me at all? The fall of man. The fall of man made our personality to have problems. I'll come back, I'll come back to that. Let's, let's deal with the other one. Let's deal with the other one so that we begin to merge them together. Our passion, sorry, our um, inclination. Your inclination talks about your natural tendencies, your urge to act in a particular way. Sometimes it's also called your interest. Are you following me, Antonio? Every one of us, you find out that there are things that you are likely tilted towards because the inclination means the things that easily drag your attention, the things that you are moved by. Some people, when you talk football, the thing just moves them. They just, they, are, they gravitate towards it. Some people, when you talk business, they have a natural tendency for business. It just comes natural for them. Are you following me at all? And you, when you check yourself as a person, 
There are things that you have natural tendencies for. You are, you are more inclined to us. You are more bent to us. And it is God that actually allow us to have things that we are more bent to us. Only that the devil can use those things against our lives and destiny. Are you following me at all? But I'm just saying that as human beings, we have things, we have, the, we have things that we have more tendencies for than some other things. Then, we then talk about your passion. Your passion talks about your energy. The energy, the energy of your emotions. The, the energy of your emotions. And you'll find out that we all don't have passion for everything. We don't have emotions for anything, everything. There are some people, once you talk about business, all of their energy will come up. They can stand up from morning to night without eating. They can be doing it. But some people, when you talk business, it doesn't move them. They don't feel, are you following me at all? So your passion actually talks about the things that, I mean, it talks about the way you, you, um, you push, the, the way you, your energy, your emotional energy moves up over things, over events, whatever it is. And, and as individuals, in the journey of fulfilling our destiny, you must have passion for things that has to do with your purpose. Because nobody has energy or nobody has energy for everything. So you have a responsibility to ensure that you are not wasting your energy, your passion. Hello? Have you noticed that if you try to do too many things at a go, you will get weary? Have you noticed that? If you try to do too many things at a go, you'll get weary. So if you have to do more than one or two things, you've got to find a way that they are all connected. That's the only way you can manage your passion. They must be connected to the purpose of God for your life. They must have something to do with what God has destined you for. When you look at Jesus, Jesus had passion for his assignment. He had passion for what he came here to do on the earth. He was energetic. One day, he was talking to a woman, and then the disciples came, and then he said, he has not eaten since morning. And he said, I have food to eat that you don't know about. In other words, Jesus was passionate about relating to lives, about winning souls, about having people to come to connect with God properly. It, that was what he has energy for. And so Jesus can can be involved with that activity from morning to night and is never tired. Unfortunately, many of us have not really identified the things that our lives are meant for so that we can concentrate our energy. Because when you begin to waste your energy on things that have no business with your destiny, you are technically wasting your lives and time. So what does the devil want for us to do? The devil wants a situation where your passion, that's your energy, your inclination, and your personality, they will be expressed in the wrong way. When you express yourself in the wrong way, when you are exerting yourself on the wrong things that have no bearing with your destiny, the devil will succeed at wasting you away. I pray for every one of you under the sound of my voice, you will not waste away. I can't hear a better amen. amen. I say you will not waste away. Amen. So what you want to do as favor to yourself is to ensure that you are in charge of yourself. You must be able to manage these three things that we are talking about. You must be able to manage your passion. You must be able to manage your interest. You must be able to manage your personality. Now what does the devil do? Most of the time there is a link between your interest and your passion. Whatever you are interested in, whatever you have inclinations for, once it is strong, you will likely have your energy go there. Anything you have interest in, your energy will likely go in that direction. So what does the devil try to do? He tries to control your interests. He does things to catch your interests that are not relevant to your destiny. And he started it from the Garden of Eden. You remember that when God told Adam and Eve, he said, this tree, don't eat out of it. Don't go near it. 
Then the devil came and packaged his marketing in such a way that the thing that God said they should not eat became something of interest. Let, let's, let's look at it in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Are we there? First look at it. Genesis chapter 3. Let's first look at verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hmm. Can we read verse 6 together? Verse 6, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, 1 to go. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree, eh? a, a tree, finish it for me, a tree, no, a, a fat pleasant to the eye, it said pleasant to the eyes, and a tree, so you see, Satan captured her interest. She became interested in something God said she should not be interested in. Are you following me at all? Not? And if there is anything the devil tries to do to waste your life and my life, is that he makes us interested in the things that will waste our lives. And once you become interested in something that is contrary to God, you will, your energy goes there. Hello? Your energy goes there, so you start having passion. You start having energy for it. You start pushing yourself in that direction. You start going for it. And once you begin to operate that way, there is problem. Because the Bible calls it lustful desire and lustful passion. Lust there means to gravitate towards the direction that is not in line with what God wants you to gravitate towards. And as human beings that really want to fulfill purpose, that want to become all that God wants you to become, you have a responsibility to manage what your interest goes for. There is a way they can manage prostitution to you as a lady, and you, you might actually have passion for it. It, it. it will no longer look bad to you. It will no longer look like anything wrong. I was talking to a young man some time ago. He was involved in um, homosexualism. And if you see the way he was passionate about it, the way he was talking about it, in fact, he was, he was trying to convince me that that's the way God made him. That pastor is you that just didn't know. You know, uh, you pastors are the ones that have created problems for people. There are people that God created that that's the way, I mean, it's man to man. And I just couldn't understand how somebody would be so, he was arguing about it. He was, you know, all his veins were coming up. Now, what was the problem? Somebody has packaged it to him in a way that his interest has gone there and then his passion is going there. Now, listen, the desire of God for your life and my life is that we will be his representatives. Are you following me at all? Genesis chapter 1 made it very clear. The Bible says, God said, let us create man in our own image after our own likeness. And I said, image means physical representation of that which is invisible. That's why the Bible admonishes us to be godly. Are you following me at all? Because we are meant to be godlike on this earth. It is only what takes the interest of God that should take our interest. No one that Jesus said, the son can do nothing except that which he sees the father do. I'm not interested in anything. That's what Jesus was saying. What captures my interest will be what is in line with God. I want to ensure that there is nothing that takes my interest that contradicts God's purpose and God's plans for me. Do you know that there are some good things that may not be God things? They appear good on the surface. They appear less threatening. They don't look like there is any problem with them. But in actual fact, they are things that can actually take you 
out of God's plan and purpose for your life. And what you don't want to do is to ever get to a point where you start mixing it up. Where your interest is on one side. You know, you, you see people who know that what they are doing or what they are involved in is not godly. On the other side, they say they like God. I like God though. But you see, you know, some of us are just still sinners. You know, we are just praying. We are not like you that are pastors now. We are just praying that one day God will help us. The, the reality is that it's not about demarcating between those who are pastors and those who are not pastors. It's about your destiny. There is something about your life that God has planned that you should become, that you should do with your life. The more you are on the side that contradicts the agenda of God, that is not in line with God, the farther you will be away from the purpose of God for your life. And there is nothing as beautiful, as lovely, as you really, really fulfilling God's purpose for your life. To waste away in life is one of the greatest things that um, your children and your grandchildren will live to regret. To say their father or their mother lived but never fulfilled destiny on, their, on this side of eternity. So we owe it to ourselves to start taking control of our interest, our passion, and then how our personality gives expressions so that we can accurately fall in line with divine agenda for us. What about your personality? Let's talk about that a little bit. You know, we've described it as the, um, the qualities you express on a constant basis, and we have mentioned some of those different kind of personality. Now, let me, let me say this to you. God never wanted you to just be a sanguine or a choleric. He wants you to have what is called spirit control temperament. Are you following me at all? Come on, say spirit control temperament. That means the way you express yourself normally, God doesn't want you to be without regulation. God wants a situation where even though you might constantly express as a choleric, God doesn't want it to be so. He wants to be the one that controls your temperament. He wants to be the one that controls how you express yourself. And that's why the Bible tells us this in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 9. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 9. Are you there? Ephesians 5, 9. The Bible says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. I repeat. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Let me merge it with um, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Are we there? Galatians 5, verse 22. Okay, now, now before I get to 22, let's first look at this. Let's, let's look at it from verse 18. Galatians chapter 5, let's speak it from verse 18. Galatians chapter 5, from verse 18. It said, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh, that is, the human nature, human personality, without the control and regulation of the Holy Spirit. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Number one, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, Strive, sedition, heresies, envies, murder, drunkenness, rivalings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit 
is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Now, let me add one more scripture. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. And then I'll take verse 5. Genesis chapter 6. Are you there at all? Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness, the twistedness of man was great in the earth. And that every inclination or imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Now, when you look at that scripture, you will see that, particularly that Genesis chapter 6, you will see that there was an expression of God for man. And at this point, God began to see that man was wicked. In other words, man had twisted, gone against the original thing that God wanted man to do. So man had twisted his expression, his behavior. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible says God created man righteous. It said, but they have gone in search of wickedness. In other words, God wanted us to do the right things, to express ourselves the right way, have the right personality, and all of that. But he said, we have, they have twisted their way. They have gone astray. All of them have corrupted their ways. And then we began to express ourselves the wrong way. And that's why we have all of those personalities, expressions, in ways that could hurt other people. Now, if you are going to fulfill your destiny, if you are going to become all that God wants you to be, then you've got to begin to manage how you express your personality. Yes, you are a sanguine by general description, but the question is that how do you express your sanguine? There must be a situation where you allow the Spirit of God to regulate your expression, to regulate the way you think, to regulate the way you feel, to regulate the way you talk, the way you act in the expressions of yourself. Because if the Spirit of God does not regulate it, you will become injurious to other people. Hello? When you begin to express your phlegmatic disposition, your phlegmatic approach of probably being careless about things, not worrying about things, in places that you should take matters serious, you can destroy things. Hello? And that's what you see with parents who should actually discipline their children, who should actually help their children, but if the mother or the father is phlegmatic, they probably will not I mean, apply discipline. They will not regulate their children. They will not help their children to, to, to be right. You see, those are the mothers or fathers that you see the child is doing something and they say, ah, John, this thing that you are doing is no good. Oh. And that's where it ends. I'm sorry to say, it almost appeared to me that Samuel, in dealing with his children, express more of a phlegmatic behavior. Because it wasn't as if Samuel did not tell the children what they did was wrong. But he didn't say it firm enough that they could see that there was seriousness in it. You remember Jesus our Lord, even though he was a gentle person. The Bible says he was gentle as dove, you remember? But do you know that one day when the people were buying and selling in the temple, what did he do? He carried a whip, and then beat them out of the temple. Is somebody with me at all now? Jesus expressed what needed to be expressed by time because that's the only way you can fulfill your destiny. There are times in your life that they, I mean, your disposition, your expression, your expression has to be fed. Some people who express more of, uh, uh, phlegmatic might need to ask the Lord for grace to be bold and courageous sometimes. Because there is, there is a way the Spirit of God can breathe upon your personality and help you to start expressing in a way that you have not been expressing before. The devil wants to take advantage of our natural self. All right, glory. 
Thank you, sister. I just sense the Lord wants us to pray in this service. I don't know for whom, I don't know why, but I sense in my spirit that the Lord will want us to pray. Take any posture you like and just begin to pray. Oh, shahate kata la brahadea. Membro ko shahate la brahande le brados kabai. Membro ko si kata la branos kabai. Membro ko si kata la bahande le rebo shahate la bai. Membro ko si kata la brahada. If you pray in the Holy Ghost, if you can pray in the Holy Ghost, the better. Membro ko shahate la bahate ya. Membro ko si kata la bahate kata ya. Membro ko. If you are joining us online, please go ahead and pray. I sense in my spirit so strongly that we should just pray. Membro ko si kata la bahada la la baya. Membro ko si kata na la brado shkaba ya. Membro kate ze telebro no shkaba. Reke telebro no ze telebro no shkaba. Membro ko shahate lebra no shkata ya. Reke telebro do shahate lebra no shkaba. Membro ko si kata na la baya. Reke telebro no si ke telebro no shkaba. Reke telebro do shahate la. Hende lebro do si kata la baya. Reka tenda le breno se ke tenda reke toshka Reka tenda le breno si hane Le breko shahate sata la baya Membro ko zi katanda la branoshka Membro ko zoto la bataya karoshke de Renda le breno za ta 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 Yeke te le breno shahate le breno za Membro ko zoto la baya Reka te le breno si kataya Reka tenda lebre rada vesha telebre noza. Reka telebre no sike telebre nosha. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Yeka tete tebre doshka paya. Reka tenda lebre noza tata. Reka telebre noza taya. Yeka telebre nosha hati. Reka telebre no zike telebre noshka. Membro ko zoto lebre noshka paya. Membro ko zata la branosh kabai. Reka tele bre da 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 da. Reka tele bre no shahate. Membro ko soto lo branosh kabai. Membro ko soto lo branosh kabai. Reka tele bre no sa. Yeka tanda re bre no sa. Yeka tanda rati sa sa bre hade. Reka tele bre no shahate. Reketo shahata balabaya, membro ko zoto labrahande, membro ko zikete lebronosh kabaya, membro ko zoto labaya. In Jesus' name, and I have this witness in my spirit that you'll pray that the Spirit of God will take absolute control, that there will be an outpouring of the Spirit of God upon your life. This, this is the sensation I began to have now as we pray. There are some of us here that God wants to move you to the next level. But you are so dry. I sense in my spirit so much dryness. So you need the water of the spirit to pour so much on you that God will adjust you, arrange you for his agenda for your life, for the new level. Can you go ahead and talk to God? That the Lord will pour the water of the spirit on you. That God will wet, wet your dryness. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. Zikata la bahate kata, wet my dryness, wet my dryness. Mambroko shahata la baya, membroko zoto la bahate, reketo zikata nda la baya, membroko zoto lo brodo shahate ya, reketa le breno zahate. Lord, wet my dryness in the name of Jesus by Your Spirit, by Your Spirit. Membro ko zoto lo brodoshka, membro ko zoto lo bronosa, membro ko zika talabaya. Can you talk to God to wet your dryness, wet my dryness in the name of Jesus, Father? Wet my dryness with your Spirit. Membro ko zoto labaya, 
let the Holy Spirit wet my dryness in the name of Jesus. Can you offer yourself to God as a living sacrifice? I offer myself to you as a living sacrifice in the name of Jesus. Wet my dryness and I position me for your agenda. Membro Kozekete, oh, sweet spirit of God, man Rako Shahate, Rekete Lebranosa, Lembro Koshahate Labrana, E Katalaba, Haya Katalabranosa, Rekete Lebranosa, Yakete Lebrana, Mamra Kataya, out of my belly shall flow rivers of Lebanon, Mamra Katalabra, Rabaya. Ya kata ta 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 Mamra kata la brada la baya Ya kata la brada la la baya kata ya How to my belly shall flow Mamra kosha Come on go ahead and pray Ya kata da 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 in Jesus, in Jesus, much less than now. Now it's becoming stronger in my spirit now. It's becoming clearer. What the Lord is trying to say to me is that there are some of you, some of us in this house, you are due for certain new operations in divine agenda, but um, you have not done enough prayer. You have not, you have not created, enough, created enough room for the Holy Spirit. It is because of you. I don't know, maybe it's just one person. But it's because of you that God is interrupting this service and that we are praying. Okay? So I wanted to pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, arrange me for what you want. Let your Holy Spirit so wet in my life that I will be adjusted. I will be tuned to your agenda. Go ahead and pray. He kato shahata la ba, reketa la ba han ne lebronosh kada la ba, mera la la ba da da la 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 ba shahate, reketa lebre da lebre han da la ba da la ba hai, reketa lebre da la da 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 da, mamro ko shahate, reketa le de 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 de, ye kete lebre da kada lebre da da ba shahan ne, roko shoto lebrono. Yeah, <laughs> Membro kosho to labro no 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 bosha he kata ta 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 membro kosha ta la ba la ba la ba la ba la ba ya ya kata la bra la 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 ba la 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 membro kosho to la ba ya ya kata la bra la la ba la 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 ba la 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 membro kosho to la ba ya re kata la bra no shahade. Father, let the water flow upon us. Let your water pour upon us in the name of Jesus. Membro Kosoto, to align with your divine agenda. Let the water of your spirit be poured upon us. Lord, we ask that the word of your spirit will pour upon our lives. He katala balaba la ba ya katala balaba ya ye katele breketo shkapaya. Ask the Lord to break every negative pattern around your life, every negative pattern that can be hindering 
that can hinder you, every negative pattern that can limit you, every negative pattern that can reduce the flow of the Spirit, the operations of God in your life, that the Spirit of God will break every negative pattern in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Lord, let every negative pattern be broken in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I like you to, to pray and intercept every negative arrangement to set you up by the enemy. That you intercept them. Play the blood of Jesus upon your life and declare you will not walk in the counsel of the devil against your life in the name of Jesus. Can you go ahead and pray? I refuse to walk in the counsel of the enemy against my life. I intercept. I intercept, I intercept in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus upon my life and I refuse to walk according to the setup of the enemy for my life. I Mambroko soto lava, hembroko si kata ndalava, hembroko si kata. Yeka telebre no shahate, reka telebre no sa. Yeka tena na 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 na. Mambroko shahate lava ya. I refuse to walk according to the counsel of the enemy against my life. Mambroko shahate, yeka telebre ko sa. I intercept every demonic setup against my life in the name of Jesus. Lebeko shaate labrahane, rekete lebreno shaate, rekete nebrehende lebredosha, yekete lebredosha, membroko soto labaya. I refuse to be set up by the enemy. I refuse every set up by the enemy. I refuse. I reject every set up by the enemy. In the name of Jesus, Rekata Lebreno Shahate, Membro Koso, Yakata Lebreka Telebreno, Yakata Lebredos Capaya, Rekata Lebredos Capaya, Membro Koso Hatela. If you're a family man, come against every setup of the enemy, family man, family woman, for your family in the name of Jesus. Every setup, every arrangement of the enemy for your home will not stand. In the name of Jesus, we intercept this morning. Membro koshate, rekata lebrano shada da 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 baya, rekata labahande. Membro koshata labalaba, rekata lebrano shate ya, rekata nde lebrano sha, i kata labaya, karosh kapande, rendo soto lebrano do 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 basha. Membro koshate, rekata lebrano sha. Oh, mambra hate ya kata, mambro koso to labra ha, mambra kata labra da 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 da, mambro koso da 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 da, mambra kata da da da. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Job chapter five. We are still praying. You see, I don't know for whose sake we are praying this prayer, but I'm I'm certain that there will be an effect. Job chapter 5. Are we there? Job chapter 5. From verse 12. Job chapter 5 from verse 12. The Bible says, God disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He captured the wise in their own craftiness and the counsel of the wicked uh, and the counsel of the forward is carried at headlong. 
They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the nighttime. But God saved the helpless from the sword, from their mouths, and from the hand of the mighty. The helpless has hope, and iniquity stoppeth a mouth. I'd like you to talk to God again. Lord, frustrate the counsel of the enemy over my life. Make it to come to naught in the name of Jesus. Can you go ahead and talk to God? In this phase of my life, whatever set up the enemy has for me in this season, frustrated. Frustrated. The book of Isaiah says it frustrated the tokens, the device of the enemy. It makes the viner smile. Let every negative agenda of the enemy against my life be frustrated. Every set up from hell to thwart my destiny. Oh, Shahate Sapandalabai. Membro Kozo Tolabaha de Katatabaya. Membro Kozi Katandalabaya. Le Kato Shahate Parade Kata. Membro Kozi Katandalabaya. Frustrate the counsel of the enemy. Nullify the agenda of hell against my life. Every device of the enemy against my destiny. I ask that they be frustrated tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, Membro kozi katanda la baya, rekete lebrenosa hate, reketosh kapanda la baya, membro kozi katanda la baya, reketosh kapaya. I refuse that my life will run as planned by the enemy. I refuse that my life will run as the enemy desire. E kato shahane lebrados, lembro kozi kata labrahane, membro koza hate labaya, reketo labrahane lebrados, reketa labrenos ataya, ya kato labrahane lebrados, ya kata lebrenosa, membro kosi kata labaya. Come and pray. Membro koza hate labrahane. Yeke telebrono Zeta Katalaba Reketo Laba Hande Lebranosa Yekata Labranos and the Labado Shahatea. I refuse that my life will run as planned by the enemy. I choose to walk in line with divine agenda. I choose to walk in line with divine agenda. In the name of Jesus, Membro Ko Shahate Laba. Reka telebredosa, membro ko shahate laba, membro ko zata taba laba, membro ko zahate lebrahade, membro ko shahate, membro ko zahate. Reka telebrenos kabai, reka telebrenosa, hebra ko shabai. I am your. I am your own till the day you work, Jesus. I am your own.
someone here in the next couple of days you have to be very careful that you do not react to people's stupidity the enemy is trying to set you up for a negative reaction that can cost you a lot now, when the event begins to happen, you will remember this. That's, that's how the Holy Spirit will help you. You actually will be provoked. But it's a plan by the enemy to get at you. And this prayer we'll pray this morning will go ahead of you at that time. And then you'll find out that you are restrained. And you're you are going to be wondering, why am I restrained? And then God will bring this that I'm talking about to your mind. Just keep quiet. And just allow the things to apply. No matter how bad, how terrible it is, just allow it. It could be in your office. It could be anywhere. Just allow it to pass. Um, after a while, you will know why God um, is restraining you. All right, Lord. Okay, Lord. Now, there's someone here. There is a pattern in your family that actually limits people from expressing, experiencing some level of um, breakthrough and enjoyment. And you are in the season that you should experience something different from what is operational in your family. In fact, you are one of the reasons why God stopped this service. I couldn't even get into my message. And the Lord is saying to me that you will need to still spend more time, but this is to initiate the process. Because you are about to cross the line that limits people in your family. And you can see it, you know, the, the opportunities are open. You know, the things, there, there are new things you're about to do that you know that you'll be, you'll be like the first in the family. But there is a restraining force that restrains people in your family. And the devil wants it to happen to you the way it happened to other people. But God has made up his mind in his own predetermined counsel that you will cross over. Okay? So, what you need to do at this season is to be more extra, extra careful. If you can do a lot of praying this season, do a lot of praying. Uh, because God wants you to break that pattern so that you can cross the other side. The good part of it is that we are starting our fast, corporate fast, as a family tomorrow. Um, and we are good. Yeah, yeah, if you want to clap, go ahead and clap. So we are, we are doing a 21 days fast, but um, we will break on, Sat I mean, um, on Saturday. We'll have a break on Saturday, Sunday. So it will be Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday. So we'll do that for uh, one, one month, and then um, we'll do the last one. So when we start now, we're going to be finishing on the 18th of December, okay? So Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday. We will be praying together every morning on Telegram. I'll be leading the prayer every morning, 6 o'clock. 
and then there might also be an evening prayer for some days. Not That one will not be every day, but for some days, we'll tell you those days that are. And then for us in this house, Friday, we'll be doing a joint prayer together um, on Friday. Amen. Um, I'd like you to take time out, because one of the things we have found out with this corporate prayer that God, I mean, corporate fasting and prayer that God asks us to pray as a family is that just immediately after the fasting and all of that, by the time we enter into the new year, people start having strange breakthroughs. We have seen it as what God works with us as a family. And I want to encourage you to make sure that you make efforts to fast. Are you following me at all? I want to encourage you that the minimum that you should do should be 3 o'clock. You know, some people say, oh, I have us, I have... Uh, those things, don't let some lies finish your life. Okay? You know, you, because you will find out that you really will not die. Nothing will happen to you. Okay? Just make sure that you, you have balanced diet or you eat nice and all that. So, I, I want to encourage that you do minimum of 3 o'clock. But if you can push it to 6, it will be really wonderful. But don't just do hunger strike. Find time to pray. Find time to spend time before the Lord to pray. The, um, the prayer direction will be sent to the um, family um, page so that we know the direction. And then it will also be taken on, uh, in the morning, 6 o'clock. I trust the Lord for you. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the operations of your spirit. We give you praise. We give you glory. Devil, you can never succeed over this life. So I declare all your aura, all your attempts, against this life is hereby nullified. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That which is divine agenda will prominently find fulfillment and expressions. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This one is the head and not the tail. Amen. And the light shines in darkness and darkness comprehend it not. Membro kosh kapati susuzia de katalabaya katos kapaya membro kozi katalabaya the path of the just shines brighter and brighter till the perfect day membro kosi katalaba hati kosh kapaya membro kosetaya I declare continuous progress around your life in your life in the name of Jesus unhindered expression of glory in the name of Jesus. You move from one level of glory to another unhindered, unstopped in the name of Jesus. Membro No wall of barrier will be able to stop you in the name of Jesus. Find full expression in Jesus' name. So Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to us as a family. I declare over everyone under the sound of my voice in this house this morning that your agenda will be completely fulfilled. In the name of Jesus, the counsel of the enemy will not stop anyone in this house in the name of Jesus. As we have spoken in your ears in prayer, there will be active performance and manifestation. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.